Well, back to the fire and water cooking channel, guys. Today is something special. There has been a chili cook-off challenge going on among some of the uh, other YouTube cook channels. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my hat in the ring. Uh, just so happens that I did a uh, uh, chuck roast video where I did two different chuck roasts, one season before sous vide and one not, and actually had some extra chuck roast left. And I'm going to use the chuck roast meat that I sous vide in the chili. So. I'll be back. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make a nice truck roast chili on the Kamado Joe Classic 2. I'll be right back, guys. All right. Since this is going to be kind of a, a leftover, simple, easy to make kind of chili, you can pretty much use any kind of leftover meat you have well, you can use it works good with leftover brisket you can actually use it with you know pulled pork if you wanted to um but uh, i'm going to happen to do it with the with a leftover chuck roast it's already cooked um all i'm going to have to do is chop it up and first thing i'm going to do though is i'm going to chop up my vegetables first and i'm going to use it's going to be really simple nothing exotic uh just so happened that the uh different colored peppers were on sale this week at sprouts so I had my wife get a couple of different colors. So we're going to use green, yellow, orange, red, and then an onion. And that's pretty much it as far as vegetables go. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of fresh garlic too, I guess. But um, as far as seasoning goes, I'm going to keep it real simple. And everything else is going to come out of cans. So I'm going to have a couple cans of Rotel. I'm going to put beans in this chili. So unlike some of the... Texas guys, you know, where they fight against beans. I'm going to do a can of kidney beans and a can of black beans. So I have two different kinds of beans. Some extra tomato, diced tomato. Um, simple seasonings today. It's going to be chili powder, cayenne pepper, some a uh, little bit of more granulated garlic, salt, maybe some regular pepper, and cumin. So real simple seasonings. I'm going to put everything down below. So just make sure you uh, write that recipe down, follow it. I'll be back. I'm not going to show you guys what I'm chopping up these vegetables. We're going to pretty much, when we take it out on the grill, everything's going to be chopped up and ready to go. And we're just going to throw it all in the pot and cook it on the Kamado Joe Classic 2 for, you know, hour or so. It won't take very long at all. All right. I'll be back after I chop up all these vegetables and get everything ready. Yeah, I didn't want to bore you with chopping up all the vegetables in front of you. But what I wanted to show you was... Uh, I didn't use all of every pepper, and I'm not using a whole onion. We only got about uh, two and a half pounds of the chuck roast, so we're not making a big, huge um, pot of chili. So what I did is I'm taking about a quarter of each pepper, and this is a rather decent-sized onion. I'm taking about half. I might cut up just a little bit more onion, but we're not using a whole bunch of vegetables. But um, just kind of wanted to show you that, and they don't have to be cut up perfect since it's going to be in a chili anything that's in a chili or a stew you really don't need to dice uh, you know to make it look really good just make sure you get it you don't want to you know big huge chunks and little tiny pieces so try to make it as uniform as possible so you just use a nice little chopper like this just make sure they're all similar in size all right well, i got my all my vegetables all uh, chopped up and ready to go and I'm going to keep them all in this one bowl. And like I said, we're going to, when we get them on the grill, we're going to sweat them down first before we add the meat. Because the meat's already cooked. Once we get the meat in there, we're going to let that mix in with the vegetables a little bit. And then we'll start adding our canned stuff in. But I'm going to go ahead and get this cut up. And we're going to cut this up into smaller chunks. Because this is chili. So I'm going to kind of make it into, you know, little chunks like this. Kind of like you would with brisket chili. Um, I don't want it to be ground beef size, but I just do want it to be smaller. So smaller than a beef stew, um, just so that we can have a nice texture to it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it up into little, little cubes, and then we're going to get ready to throw everything on the grill in a few. I'll be back.
All right, my Kamado Joe is sitting right at almost 300 degrees, which is kind of right where I want it. I don't want it to get too hot. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my, I have my uh, accessory rack in there. So you can tell, and I got it in the highest position. And I got my cast iron stock pot that I'm going to go ahead and use, my Dutch oven. And I'm going to go ahead and let that warm up a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the bottom. That way I'll know when it's warm enough to uh, put my veggies in. I'm going to toss a chunk of oak wood in there to get a little oak smoke going so that uh, we can have a little bit of smoke to our chili. So I'm going to let that come up to temp a little bit more. Get ready to uh, get our vegetables going. I'll be back. Alright guys, I went ahead and uh, let that sit till it got up to about 250 and made sure that my oil was ready. I went ahead and tossed in a couple of onions to see if they uh, started to fry in the oil that was already in there and they started to fry pretty quick. So I added a little bit, just a little bit more oil and then I tossed my veggies in my onions, peppers, and I went ahead and scraped the bowl clean, got everything in there. I want to make sure I get all the, uh, all the bits in there, and then pretty much just toss it up until uh, we come back and check it in a couple minutes to see if it's sweating down good. So, all right, about 10 minutes, I'll be back to check on it. All right, guys, after about 10 minutes, I went back to look at my vegetables, and they were actually pretty good. So I gave them a nice quick stir, and then I went ahead and uh, took my seasoning blend, you can see down below in the comments. Um, and I added that into the vegetables so it could get uh, cooked into the vegetables really good. And this actually turned out to be a really good uh, uh, seasoning uh, amount, so make sure you take a look at it down below. Um, it turned out really good. Uh, it wasn't too hot, wasn't too, uh, it wasn't really lacking of anything. So after I let that, uh, sweat a little bit more with the uh, spices and seasonings uh, for a couple minutes. I went ahead and added my chuck roast, gave that a quick stir so we can get it all incorporated with the vegetables and the seasonings. I did uh, add just a little bit more oil so I could uh, get it uh, cooked up a little bit because it was cold so I wanted to actually heat up a little bit with the vegetables and the seasonings before I started adding any of my canned products. So I gave that a couple of quick stirs, let the fire get uh, hot. So it was uh, cooking this pretty hot right there. You can see the flames shooting out of the <laughs> from the grill. Then I added just a little bit of beef broth, about a half a cup of beef broth, and I'm gonna let that just cook for a little bit. All right, guys, I got my vents turned down pretty much all the way now. So I want this to start cooling down because it's already got these all sweated down really good. The meat's heated up really well and incorporated into the seasonings and the beef stocks in there. So now I'm going to add, I got two cans of Rotel, one can of uh, regular diced tomatoes, a can of red kidney beans, and a can of black beans. And that's all just going to go right in the mixture. We're going to mix it up really good with that meat and vegetables. Look how that's looking right there. Smells good. And now, we're just going to let this cook down some. I'm gonna, like I said, I cranked the, vet, the vents down on the grill. So this should be cooling down to around 225 to 250 and we're just going to let it sit here and simmer and cook and meld together and we'll leave it here for about half hour or so then we'll come back to check on it and check our seasonings well, I'll be back. Alright guys after about 45 minutes our chili is looking really good it's starting to thicken up really nice so I'm going to go ahead and let it cook for another 10 minutes or so. And then we're going to go ahead and take it off the grill. But look so far, I didn't have to add any more beef stock or anything. So it's thickening up really good. 
everything is coming together real well. So I'm gonna get this, let it sit for another 10 minutes and get it off the grill. All the chili's done, smells fantastic. And it thickened up just nice. Don't need to add anything else to it. I went ahead and made myself a bowl with all the accompaniments that I like. I put a little cheese, put it over some rice, a little sour cream, some cornbread muffins we're gonna eat with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste so we can go eat our dinner. But it smells awesome. And it's been kind of cold down here in Florida, so we really needed this chili. Mm. I think I nailed the spices pretty good. It's got a little kick to it, not too bad. And uh, thickness is just right. And I know the big controversy about beans and chili, but I like beans and chili, and I actually like different kinds of beans in there. So the black beans and the red kidney beans kind of go well together. Mm. All right, guys, well, that's it. Up. Try making some chili with some leftover brisket or leftover uh, chuck roast that you sous vide or cooked any other way. Try it on the Kamado Joe if you have one. If not, try it out on the grill anyway. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks.